Today in Studio 4, we meet Kim Collier, one of the directors of an electric company that dispenses theater instead of voltage. Collier's pals light up your life with live performances and other creative adventures to spike your imagination instead of your power bill. Alfred Hitchcock once said, drama is life with the dull bits cut out. Kim Collier is an actor with the dull bits cut out. She's a drama junkie and player in the independent high voltage theater scene in Vancouver. Her company is called The Electric Company. It is my pleasure to welcome Kim Collier to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I, I say your company is a collective. Yes. There's four of you? There's four of us. So the, the company's 10 years old and it began uh, with four artists, David Hudgens, Kevin Kerr, Jonathan Young, and myself. And uh, yeah, we all met at theater school. And some years after graduating, we formed this company. And we've been creating and producing mm. original works of theater for 10 years. Where'd you go to theater school? Well, a lot of us went many places, but our final education was at Studio 58 Langara here in Vancouver. Great. Yeah. And then we'd come from other universities and other programs prior to that, UBC, McGill, UVic and stuff like that. Yeah. When you sit around the table and, yeah. and try and determine uh, what the electric company is about, you know, in the corporate world, we have mission statements, things like mm -hmm. that. But what is the electric company about? What runs, what's the thread that runs through it? Well, I would say that we're passionate about creating works of theater that are, you know, pushing the boundaries of what we understand theater mm -hmm. to be while maintaining a strong sense of narrative and that has an emphasis on physical and visual imagery. So we, you know, we're very influenced by film and visuals. And when we look at a play, we're always looking at the narrative and thinking about, well, what way can we tell this part of the story? What way can we imagine it to right. be? That's not just actors doing their dialogue on stage. Stuff like that. So sure, it's that, more. My sense of your company is it's more than speechifying yeah. on stage. It's there's some high tech things going on. Yes, yeah, so we're very interested in new technologies and yeah, I'm working interfacing with media and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you pick a play, you think new playwright, old playwright. I, I doubt you do much Shaw or Shakespeare. Well, we write or our plays. Or do you? We create our plays. So right now, yes, if you're just saying the mission statement of the company is to create and produce original works of theater mm -hmm. that are born of the artists of the company in collaboration with other artists as well. So we are thinking about um, ideas uh, that come on our collective radar that we become passionate about, whether it's a thematic departure, um, an issue departure, or um, a site departure of a location, and then we move on to finding what is our, the story that we find within that departure point. So we do that together collectively, and sometimes we have. Well, theme. you're nominated for a whole load of Jesse's seven, I think, seven nominations, Jesse Awards. Studies in Motion was the play. Yes. The Hauntings of Edward Moybridge. Who he? <laughs> <laughs> Briefly. <laughs> Who he? Edward Moybridge, back before the turn of the century, pioneered stop motion photography. So, in some circles, he's considered the father of film. So, and back in that time, our photographic technologies, were, it was the whole sit for the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. And then Moybridge was working um, with Leland Stanford, who was... Stanford University, yes, Leland Stanford? Yes, who wanted to find out if a horse had all four hooves off the ground when it was running. And he made a partnership with Moybridge to help develop the photographic technology to try and capture a horse in motion that would answer this question. Aha! S well, yes. looks like they're all off the ground. Yeah, it does, <laughs> and they did find that out. But in the, in the process of this, Moybridge became very obsessed with this, this whole idea and the motion that was revealed. So it was like when those photographs were taken, they revealed things that we had never really seen by the human eye in our natural lives. You know, you didn't know that someone looked like this as they were bending down en mm. route. So Moybridge is that, is that photographer, you know, those art books of the naked body walking? Right. across or um, standing up on a chair and getting down or a woman with a fan. There's some more images there. Mm -hmm. So in these images, um, Moybridge is also a man who took these images and played them back um, on a Zoopraxis scope. And when they were run together, it created the first sense of not only capturing motion and stilling it, but then playing it back so it came to life again. So there's some movement. Yeah. 
And so this is why he's often thought of as the father of film. But there was other photographers in this period who were also, you know, investigating similar things. But Moybridge has an, a massive body of investigation of, of work with these photographs, both animal and human. He also yeah. did himself a bit, didn't he? Wasn't he yeah. a bit self-reflective? <laughs> he had all that wild hair. Yeah, yeah. Moybridge and... Yes, yes, he's a... Well, there are so many interesting things to his character. So, yes, he did photograph himself, and w there's another image of him there. Mm -hmm. And he w what is interesting is that he called himself... He didn't identify himself as Moybridge in those photographs. He still labeled himself like Model 36 or... Um, so the departure point for the company and the playwright, Kevin Kerr, who wrote this play in collaboration with the artists of our company, um, he was wondering why this man was so obsessive about capturing these photographs. Mm -hmm. He did 708 studies, over 100,000 photographs in a period of history when photo photo photography, every picture was a lab laborious process. Why did this man become so obsessed with these pictures. And when you look at the pictures, they're very evocative, they have a sense of narrative, they're kind of erotic. Mm -hmm. And I think Kevin was thinking about that and thought, well, who is this man? How did he come to be doing this intense study? And when you look back in the history of Edward Moybridge, it turns out that he um, was actually, um, his wife was, um, had an affair, he ended up murdering the lover. And frontier justice in America, in San Francisco in that period, um, acquitted him. So. The, the, and so when you t start to look at his melodramatic personal history, and he had a child there too. And um, his wife left him, looking like that? I can't well, imagine. The, his, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, because he's all good. Yeah. No, he was brilliant, but he was yeah. probably a savant. And he probably cared way more about photography than he did about his dear wife. But I don't know the story. Right, so wife starts to hook up with a local foppish uh, theater critic in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and he starts taking her to the theater. She's a socialite, and of course, Moybridge is busy working. Of course, an affair ensues. Not um, much changes, does it? Uh -huh. I'd rather have the fun guy than the worker. Yeah, I guess something like that. Maybe, anyway. <laughs> or is that a bit trite? Well, mm -hmm. I think mm, perhaps yes. Mm -hmm. She was a it's it's interesting girl and very self-preservationist. Um, her name was Flora. So eventually, Flora becomes pregnant, and the paternity of that child is in question and Moybridge begins to suspect that it's the lover. And in one instance, I mean, he, uh, he loses his wife, potentially his child, and his whole sort of personal life. And Moybridge is known in these historic moments in the courtroom and in finding that out, to have these incredible, e massive human outbursts. Is all of this in the play? Yeah. All of it's in the play? It's all in the you play. You directed, sort of like, right? Yes. Difficult to direct and string he, it through, I would think. Yeah, it was complicated. I mean, Kevin's a very ambitious writer, and he writes a lot of subplots. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with a lot of large themes, and we were working with a lot of new technologies in this production. So um, how to move between the layers on stage right. was a very complicated process. And there was some nudity in the play, obviously, I assume. So Yeah, so we went full throttle with the nudity in the sense that we had a full company of nude actors. But it was very beautiful because it, it, it pre presented the... Our, our nudity in our bodies, not in a sexual sense, but as humans, mm -hmm. as we are, as, as you know, creations on this earth. So we had right. a gorgeous opening choreography, choreographed by Crystal Pite, that opened with our full company coming on naked. And that just got it out of the way for the audience. So then as they were watching Moybridge photograph um, different subjects in his compound, we no longer as an audience felt that discomfort. Oh, there's a naked actor on stage. Right. We really got to use to that whole mm -hmm. And aesthetic. when you have uh, actors who are naked, you have to make them safe. The atmosphere has to be safe. Very safe. As you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go to your other project because uh, Studies in Motion is done. Will you remount it? Yes. Studies in Motion uh, was a very successful production. A lot of excitement generated by it. And we're going to develop it further. We'd like to take it to the next level with any artistic project. You want to right. revisit them. You want to hit the points. Of that you course. Do. Or take uh, it to Broadway. Yeah. And so we <laughs> have... Broadway. Yeah, we have companies that are interested in partnering with us and it going up again. So what we're looking for is studies in motion to remount in Vancouver and tour 2008. Great. After a development period in The Jessies haven't happened yet, right? No.